I'm Stacy. I'm Jenny. And this is Learning for Life, a homeschool podcast. We are two homeschoolers who use different methods, curriculum, and strategies to make it all work. Our goal is to help parents teach kids how to develop a lifelong love of learning. Hello and welcome to the Learning for Life podcast. This episode is going to be one of our how-to episodes. And what we do in these episodes is we take a topic and we dive a little bit deeper with it. And they're a lot shorter than our regular full episodes. So if you are looking to be able to get movies into your homeschool more, you're definitely going to want to stick around for this episode. I'm Stacy, and I cannot wait to talk to you more about movies because I absolutely love using movies as much as possible. Even when my kids were little, I was starting to find some benefits to them watching movies. Again, our society, we know that screens are not great for our children, and I'm not sitting here saying that your kids need to be in front of a movie or a screen 24-7 to teach with movies, but I'm just saying when you do want to incorporate some movies into your homeschool, you can even kind of say, hmm... They're, they're going to learn from this. We're, we're going to make this a little bit educational, but it's still going to be fun, I promise, okay? So we are talking about full-length feature films here. We're not talking about YouTube videos. We're not talking about short little, you know, magic school best episodes that are going to be educational. We're just talking about your regular feature film that you can enjoy with the whole family if you want. I know for my kids, I use a lot of Disney movies, so I'll probably use a lot of Disney references uh, just to let you know right off the bat. You can find all sorts of lessons inside of movies. You can find life lessons. You can even find skills that can be learned. You can find educational facts, and you can even find literary elements in movies. Movies actually take a lot of literary elements, such as plot, setting, character, hero's journey, all of these different topics, and it it gets transferred over to movies as well. So you can sort of teach literature with movies. I wanted to just take a quick moment and talk about all the different types of movies that I'm talking about. So we can include here documentaries, which are just packed full of information and are deliberately made to sort of teach you something. You even have nature documentaries that specifically are about nature. You have movies that are set in specific time periods. So They're not necessarily historically accurate, but they can give your kids kind of a sense of what it was like in old time London or in the jungles of the Amazon. And even again, even though it's not meant to be historically accurate, they do take a lot of inspiration from the time periods when they are making movies. You could look at movies like musicals, which are going to give you a lot of music and a lot of acting and a lot of expression of feelings through songs. Super fun. You can do live action. You can do animation, stop motion, and just movies that are just there for pure entertainment. Those sometimes can even have life lessons in them if you know where to look. So when you are looking to start out using movies in your homeschool to be slightly educational, then you can make this as simple or as complex as you want. You can watch a movie and then just talk about it, ask them questions afterwards, maybe pick out, like I said, some of those time periods. Say, oh, when when do you think this movie took place? If it doesn't specifically say in the movie, you can kind of get your kids to start to think about that. Or you could add it as part of a unit study. You could make the movie kind of, you know, you could find extra literature. You could find extra experiments that all tie into this movie. You can do as much or as little as you want. But I just want to be here to kind of give you guys some ideas on things that you can do to help incorporate that movie time that you have your kids. And you can feel a little guilt free because, you know, there's some educational value coming afterwards. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about those documentaries and nature documentaries. When you put those on, I I feel like those are kind of the standard homeschool sick days that people put on because I do it for sure. If my kids are just not feeling well, I'm like, here, look, let's let's watch some Disney nature and you'll be good to go for your homeschooling for the day. So sometimes you can use them in your homeschool like that. Or if you want to take it even further, I know that the Disney Nature specifically, those documentaries, you can go on to the Disney Nature website and I'll make sure to put a link in the description in the show notes. And Disney Nature has actually provided little worksheets for all 
or at least most of their Disney nature movies. So they have one Disney nature called Penguins. And if you go onto their website, you can download the educator packets and the activity packets and your kids can learn even more about like the animals in Antarctica, play a little game. And so those are really fun if you want to just print those off along with the documentary and you've got yourself a full lesson plan. So those I highly, highly recommend. What do you do when there is not a lesson plan easily available for the movie you're looking for? You can add in some of your own activities and a couple of quick ideas for you are depending on the historical location of the movie you're watching. You could easily go on to Pinterest or just the internet and type in, you know, if you're doing something that takes place in early America, you could look up, you know, early colonial activities and you'll probably find some lesson plans there. So it might not tie in directly to the movie you're watching, but you'll be able to kind of make that movie part of something else you're learning. So for examples for myself, I'm going to try to kind of do that backwards with one of my curriculums. I'm currently using History Quest and we are learning about early times. So I, my goal is for every chapter, we cover a different time period or place in the early times. And so, for example, we're going to learn about Egypt. So I'm going to go find a movie that just ties in based on that loose theme of Egypt. So there's a bunch of different videos I'm going to be looking into and we'll probably pick one. So if you are already covering something in your homeschool and you know there's a movie that would tie in nicely, you could kind of combine it that way. Or you can pick the movie and then add activities to it to make the movie like tie into your learning. So you could do it either way. And that could be a really fun way to really incorporate movies into your homeschool. Again, don't underestimate the amount of English and literary concepts that you can teach your kids through movies. This was like the first thing I did when my kids were young was we were watching a movie and I started introducing what's the title of this movie for younger kids again what's the title so they would know what title was we also would we would do the same thing when we did read alouds I'd say what's the title of this book who are the characters what is the setting so then they're watching a movie and I come in and pause it real quick and I say okay who are the characters so being able to just reiterate that you know whether we're reading or watching a movie there's still setting title characters and all of that within it. And you can even talk about, you know, what happens at the beginning, the middle, the end. What's the resolution? All of these things that you would teach in English or in reading, you can also teach with movies. One side fun fact that I have heard people do, but I have not done it myself, and I feel like people probably joke about it more, but if you want your kids to practice reading a little bit more, you could put the movie on put subtitles on and then turn down the volume and have your kids read the movie as they go. Um, I also even had in high school, my Spanish teacher did this. So she took a typical movie that she knew everybody had seen, like The Lion King. She put the Spanish captions on along with just the Spanish words so that we could kind of relate to it that way. Um, so again, if you want to teach Spanish with movies, there you go. That's one option for you. But being able to in include a little bit more literacy, even if you keep the volume up and you just have the words at the bottom of the screen, that's another way to just incorporate more literacy, whether they're watching it or not. But they'll get to see for my younger kids. Um, we would do some Disney sing-alongs, if you remember those way back when. And I found some on like, uh, I think Netflix had it or something. And it just has like the bouncing ball. So I would say, oh, find all the sight words, the. And it was a fun game for my, at the time, you know, like kindergartner. And they would point out all the sight words. So again, taking that technology and those movies and just making it a learning game is always so much fun. Okay, my last tip for you for today is going to be to prove that books are always better than the movies. Um, <laughs> so basically, I kind of decided uh, this past year that I was going to start doing more read-alouds with my kids, and they're they're starting to get older, and I wanted to introduce them to more movies. Um, but there were movies such as Chronicles of Narnia or Harry Potter that I could, I was like, there's no way we're going to watch this without reading the book first. So this was a huge motivator for my kids to really 
ask me, like, can we read more? Let's get this done. Because I told them, once we read the book, we're allowed to watch the movie. And so they would get really excited about read aloud types. Like they were always pretty excited, but this just took it a little bit higher to where they were just like, you know, we, we, we're, we're, we're making progress. Let's do this. We, we can do it. And then they got at the end, they would get to watch the movie. So funny enough, I had my oldest was sitting with me on the couch. We had read the first Harry Potter and then we were watching the movie And after the movie was done, he turned to me and he said, they skipped a lot of parts. The book was definitely better. And I was just like, high five. And (laughs) that is why we read the book first, because yes, the movies are awesome. But I feel like the movies only did as well as they did because it had such a fan base. And a lot of movies are that way because they had a good story and a good book to go along with them. All right, those are all of my tips that I have for you for being able to incorporate more movies into your homeschool learning. If you have any other questions about anything that I talked about, feel free to contact us at kidslearningforlife at gmail.com. You can also find us on Instagram and Facebook, and you can even find more of our homeschool videos on YouTube. Thanks for listening to this homeschool how-to, and I will see you next time.